Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the second uh, morning of our Advent devotions, uh, and I uh, hope you're able to to join us. Just a reminder about our Christmas gift appeal, uh, and we're doing it slightly differently this year because we're not able to meet uh, in church together this Sunday. What we're doing is opening the reception area this Saturday morning from 10 till 12. You can drop off your gift and there'll be somebody there to collect it. And a reminder just of the kind of gifts that uh, Belfast City Mission are looking for this year. Selection boxes, boxes of biscuits, tins of sweets, uh, gift cards or vouchers, uh, monetary gifts, non-perishable groceries. And those details uh, of what they're looking for is up on the, the church Facebook page. The nativity story tells us that our God is a God who is full of surprises. Uh, we are so familiar with that story now that we expect the surprises when they come. We're not um, in the midst of the story and having it happen to us. Uh, we know how it all turns out and we know what happens with uh, Mary and the angels and Joseph and uh Elizabeth and Zachariah and all of the characters who play their part in the story. We know what the surprises are, so we're not surprised anymore. But if you're in the position of those people at that time, everything is a surprise, everything is new, everything is different. But actually, the whole idea of God being a God of surprises goes all the way back to Genesis, goes all the way back to the way he started to deal with Abraham. And it shouldn't have been a surprise when Mary started to think about it, when Mary started to, as the Bible says, she did ponder these things in her heart, that she would look back over the whole history of the nation of Israel and see how God was at work in the surprises that he produced in the lives of his people. One of the first surprises was with Abraham and Sarah. I'm going to read to you from Genesis chapter 15, just a few verses. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. And then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. The promise, of course, that is made to Abraham and to Sarah is that they will have a child. Uh, and that through this child and his descendants, they will be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Abraham and Sarah have everything else that you could want in life, at least at their time. They are an extremely wealthy couple. Abraham is an extremely wealthy man. And so they are well off, well provided for in every single way, except that Abraham has no heir to pass it on to. Abraham has no child of his own. And this cousin Eliezer of Damascus, part of his household, will end up being uh, his heir, will end up inheriting all of his wealth. It'll not go to a child of his own. And the promise to Abraham and Sarah has always seemed an unlikely one. They were an elderly couple when God called Abraham uh, to follow him to a land he didn't yet know. They were, uh, Sarah was already past the age where she could have children. So it, it seems un, an unlikely reality that these two people will produce a child who will go on to have a family who will bless the nations. And then God speaks. Uh, and when God speaks, 
things happen. It's not just a, a communication. It's not just information. When God speaks, things happen. And so God's word comes to Abraham and he says, Abraham, look up. Look up at those stars. Try to count them. Stars in the night sky. And he says to him, Abraham, your offspring will be like that. Innumerable. They will stretch on and on through history. And in the face of what seemed to be insurmountable odds, Abraham believed the word of God. Abraham believed that God could do exactly what he promised he would do. And as a result, it was counted to him as righteousness because he believed God's word. And of course, in his obedience to God, ultimately came along Isaac, and then Jacob, and then 12 sons of Jacob who formed the 12 tribes of a nation, Israel, from whom ultimately Messiah came. Abraham believed that God could do the impossible. And throughout the pages of the Old Testament, that pattern is repeated again and again and again. The God of surprises comes in again and again and again and turns situations around. Uh, he takes a, a, a cowardly kid called Gideon and he defeats an army of Midianites with him and a handful of men. He takes uh, the youngest of Jesse's family and makes him the greatest king of Israel in the Old Testament, David. He takes uh, a teenager called Jeremiah uh, and points him to be a prophet to the nation of Judah and to continue to keep on speaking words that the nation doesn't want to hear for 40 years. God does all of these things. And of course, in the New Testament, he does it again. And Mary is the one this time who believes the impossible. This is the pattern of faith that continues through, uh, throughout the Bible. Mary believes when the angel tells her all things are possible with God. You know, it is impossible for rebellious sinners, people who are dead in their transgressions and sin, to come to a life with God, to know God and to know his salvation. It's impossible for us to do by ourselves. But all things are possible with God. And it is through the impossible things that he does in scripture, through the amazing thing that he does in Mary's womb, through the incredible sacrifice that he gives for us on the cross, that we are made right with him. And what do we have to do to receive this righteousness? Follow Abraham's pattern. Abraham believed God and he counted it to him as righteousness. What we have to do is simply believe, accept Jesus Christ took the punishment for our sin, died for our sin, rose again to give us life, did the impossible, conquered death. We need to put our faith in him and he counts it to us as righteousness. What a God we have who does the impossible in our lives just as he's done throughout scripture. Trust in him today for everything that you need. God bless.